everyone, and welcome to this week's Good Work Show. Uh, we are still continuing. I think this is will be our wrap. So we're wrapping our Earth Month uh, series of shows, and we have some great organizations on. Hopefully, you've listened to some or watched some. And if you haven't, we encourage you to go back because we learned a lot. I know you will probably learn a lot, but we also reconnected or connected with some great organizations that are doing fantastic work to help us be more sustainable environmentally friendly, to learn about the environment around us and giving us easy things that we can all do to support um, our earth, which I guess everybody on here lives on. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you might, you might live somewhere you else, but not, well, here's the thing. The assumption that we live here now, yes, we live here now, but you, now you may not have originated from here on earth. Well, you know I mean, what? I, that that's fine. That's fair. But if you're if you're on if you're an Earthling, <laughs> the shows are for you. But we have an organization we've alluded to like a million times, I think, in the last few weeks on the show, uh, Compost Now. So it's great to catch up with. Them. Finally, yes, finally, we've talked to them. We've mentioned them. We've evoked their names. We have yes done all of the above. So, you know, finally, we're going to talk directly to the source and learn about what they're doing um, in the community and how you can tag into support. But I will say, I think it's interesting. So what have you done? What have, what lessons have you now adopted after we've gone through this month of earth-friendly things? Oh, I went all the way in. I, I, I told you I planted my whole garden outside. I became a farmer. <laughs> I turned into a farmer. No, I, I did. So, um, so it, actually not even related to this was uh, my sister and, and I had been talking about like just trying to grow stuff. Like she's trying to eat healthier. I pretty much eat healthy all the time as part of my lifestyle, but we were um, talking about it. And so she had gotten this raised garden bed. And I was like, oh, that's nice. I was like, let me get one too. So I got a different kind. And then my mom ended up getting one. So now, and then my aunt's probably going to buy one because, you know, now everybody's like into the thing. And so, um, so I planted, so I have like a herb garden, you know, it's small, it's, the, it's smaller than this desk. I'm on, but it's small. I got to start small because I don't really know if I can grow this stuff. I mean, I'm just starting. So, you know, the stuff might be dead. <laughs> I'm trying to, so I'm trying to, to do that. So I've watched a few little YouTube videos and then I had forgotten. And my sister reminded me cause she'd gotten some, um, some stuff from my brother when she last went to his house and he has a whole, he has a whole garden in his backyard. Like, this, like he's into it, into it. Like he, he does his own composting. He has like all kinds, he knows the stuff and he's like, oh, this is what you got to do. You got to do this and you got to get this. You got to mend your soil and then you got to do the compost and you get these worms. And I was like, you know what? First of all, back all that back. <laughs> Let's start how from the deep, basic. How deep should the hole be that I put the seed in? Oh, I now you see what? Now I didn't even asked that part. That would have been a good question. <laughs> I just, I just put it in there. Well, I didn't start from seeds. I started from the plants. I started okay. from the, yeah, because I figured by the time I try to do the seed, and remember, that's why I asked you about that that Instagram video with the man with the peppers. Oh, with the peppers. Yes, because, because I tried to tell my sister how you grow red peppers as you grow the green ones and you leave them on there. She was like, no, 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 that's not right. I said, let me find this video. The man it's on true. Instagram did it. Now, I think there are different varieties now that I've learned and I've been to the nursery. There are different varieties of them. But what I was talking about was Instagram. <laughs> of course, because that not that what we're all talking about? Right. Instagram that, or TikTok, one of the yes. other. So that's what I've done. Um, I didn't I didn't make any compost, but I did buy some and I did support uh, an in-town nursery by buying my plants from there. So that's that was my big to do. So we'll see what happens, see if this stuff is dead in the <laughs> next few weeks. Um, what did I do? So I have been more intentional about organic, buying organic. And usually sometimes I'm kind of like, eh, whatever, you know, yes, no, whatever. But I actually have been looking 
and going in like my Amazon cart. If I had something in there that I had purchased before, yeah. I go and because that's my reminder about what I need. But then I go in there and I say, okay, if I bought chicken, let me go and find the organic version or, you know, half and half for my coffee. Then I look for the organic. So I've been purposeful about that. And I went to the farmer's market this weekend. Oh, did you get some good stuff? Um, no, I got, <laughs> a, <laughs> well, okay. Now I, okay. So to be fair, I went late. So I didn't realize oh. that. So the, the farmer's market by my house is only on Saturdays. I thought it was Saturday and Sunday, but it is only on Saturdays and it's like eight to noon. Mm. So it was like 10 30 when I decided I was ready to like go do in farmer's markets. I know that's an early morning deal. Yeah. But I was like, okay, I kind of just needed to make one trip out and then go do everything I needed to do. So that, you know, 1030 was what I did get a very nice soy candle. Okay. Not good. edible, but nice candle. And I got local honey, which I'm very, I've actually, oh, yeah. ever since I moved to Atlanta, because I've never had allergy issues, but everybody says as soon as you move That's to Atlanta, what happens when you move, it yeah. happens. So, yeah. but it's not bad enough that I need medication, but I have been very purposeful about buying as local honey as I can, because that is supposedly one of those things that helps mm -hmm. having that local honey. So when I have my tea, so the honey I got was from Douglasville. So oh, okay. I was like, that seems local. <laughs> so that, that's local. That, I mean, yeah. not, not unless it's out of your backyard. <laughs> right. Well, I do have, be, I mean, I mean, that could, no, I'm not doing that. I'm some people do now they have like kits where you could do your own um, oh i know but me so. and bees do not like there's one you know that one bee that used to live on my patio and my other oh place, i remember you talking it about moved that. i don't know if it was in a box with me but like it's outside on the deck now like the one <laughs> oh wait it moved to the new house <laughs> oh yeah yeah that's your friend your i need friend. to name it and just decide he's my pet and he lives here now well, but, you, um, giving him a new home, that's part of one of the things you could check off too. Bees are important for pollination, which I learned. These are like you know? those big stupid bees that just fly um, into the, I, I don't think they serve a purpose, but um, um, they're in the so, circle of life, Trini. They serve a purpose. <laughs> so somebody something. eats that bee and then that becomes something. And eventually that's the chicken you ate. <laughs> that's true. You're right. Somewhere or another, that bee matters. So, That's yeah, so I think the final step in my um, earth awareness I've been alluding to has been composting. So we're going to, um, we talked to the folks from compost. Now we're going to apologize in advance because this may be a little chaotic because I had something happen in the middle of this interview. So <laughs> while I did disappear, I'm here. Still alive. <laughs> All is well. <laughs> I wasn't attacked by the bee or anything like that. Right. But, um, but yeah, hearing from um, Kat over at Compost Now and learning all about what they do and how we can support them and how they're supporting. Um, actually, it's interesting. A lot of the organizations that we talked to earlier who are doing local farming and that kind of stuff, how they kind of plug into that circle of life. So good conversation. So let's, uh, let's hear from Kat. And welcome back to the Good Work Show. As we said, we've been doing a series um, all around Earth Day and Earth Month and talking to some of our favorite organizations that are helping us be a little greener, be a little bit more sustainable and just helping the environment. So we've got one of our favorites to bring back on Compost Now with our Chief Experience Officer, Kat Nigro. Welcome to the show. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. Absolutely. I love how the, the last part of your last name is, says grow. Is yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why that just, you know, feels like it's just appropriate for compost now. But uh, but anyway, so for those folks who don't know, and I know Trinice and I know uh, just a bit about compost now because you've been on the show before, but tell everybody about compost now and your mission. Sure thing. 
So Compost Now is a collection service who empowers local community members and businesses to divert their compostables from the landfill and instead use those nutrients uh, for local soil by composting. So all that to say, in short, we help people compost through our composting programs. That's awesome. And if anyone's been listening to the show for like the last month, I've probably mentioned compost now about three or four times because I feel like I'm finally in a place where I think I can start composting. And um, before when, I think the last time we had, well, I know for sure, when we talked to you guys before I was living in a different place and I'm like, I don't know where I'm gonna put this thing, but now I really don't have that excuse anymore. So talk to folks a little bit about how the program works and then help remind me why I said I might be ready to do this. (laughs) I can do that, that I can do. So like I mentioned, you know, we started this service to address the main pain points of composting, right? Some folks don't have the space to do it on their own. Maybe they live in an apartment complex or they're super busy and they don't have the time to maintain their own pile in their backyard, or more likely they, they don't want to, right? They have other priorities in their life that they want to prioritize. Uh, they want to compost, but again, they might not just have the time and the know how to do so. So that's where our service um, came to be with the idea that if we can make composting easy, more people will do it, right? And more people will do it, not just the folks that were always gonna give it a go regardless, but folks that never dreamt of composting can compost through our programs. So here's how our home service works. We make it very easy because we do it for you. Um, You would sign up for our service online at compostnow.org. And from there, you'll get a, weekly collection day. So let's say for you every Wednesday. So you would get one of our bins and you would put all of your compostables in there for the week. Y'all, that's about 60% of your waste stream. So if you take out recyclables, 60% of your trash can go into our compost bin. We take things like meat and dairy and pizza boxes, things that you can't compost in your backyard. And you would put it all in our bin. And then on your weekly collection day, you're going to set it outside our compost fairies, aka our wonderful drivers, are going to come by your house and swap your bin with a clean bin. And we're going to record your weight and your member dashboard so you know exactly how much you're diverting every single week. And then from there, a percentage of your diversion weight is stored in your compost bank as compost that you can request back at any time. So we're really closing the loop there, right? You're giving us your compostables, we're processing the material, and then we're giving you the compost back if you would like it. So Kat, I think that's the the most important part and the key part because, um, so I'm a super newbie at at gardening. I was just, just, I got a, I I bought a raised bed and I just put it together like over the weekend. And, um, but my brother happens to be a very experienced gardener. I, well, I'm going to say very experienced because he's got a garden in his backyard and he, he composts himself, but he was saying, oh, you got to get these worms. You got to do this. And you got, it's hot and it's cold. I was like, you know what? (laughs) This is way too much. I just don't want to kill the stuff that I just put in this raised bed, which happens to just be a few herbs. Cause I'm, I'm scared that, you know, I I start small. So, um, so I think that's the best part, right? So you're taking all of the guesswork out of it. And for those folks who were like me, who are either just starting out or don't know, like what's the benefit of composting? Because that people hear about it. And if you're not going to grow anything um, in your yard or you're not into gardening, or you're really not sure about it, like what, what are the benefits to those people who are gardeners? And then what are the, what about people who aren't like, what's the benefit? Absolutely. That's a really good question. Um, So the the beautiful thing about composting is that there's so many benefits, right? Whether you're using the end compost um, or you're not. So I wanna talk about the two different types. The first is the benefit of just composting, the act of composting, right? Right now in the US, I'll throw some numbers. um, 40% of food is wasted. And the majority of that is sent to a landfill. And when you send food scraps and other organic material to a landfill, it's going to emit methane in the process of rotting. And what that and methane is 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide as it relates to climate change. So just the act of composting, we are playing our part in avoiding those methane emissions entirely, right? 
So that's the benefit of just the act of it. Whether you're using the end result or not, just diverting that from the landfill is important because those are precious resources. Mm -hmm. But then let's talk about the benefits of compost itself, the nutrient-rich, beautiful, earthy soil. So when you apply compost, um, what you're doing is you're adding the necessary nutrients to the soil to be able to grow healthy food, right? So if you want healthy food, you need healthy soil. And that's what composting does. When you add compost to your soil, it adds so many beautiful benefits to soil. It strengthens its structure, so it prevents erosion. It holds five times its weight in water, which is really helpful during hot Atlanta heat, as you know. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> as you know. Um, but again, it adds those necessary nutrients to plants, uh, which is going to help it grow to be healthy and nutritious. Yeah. Um, so those are kind of the two main benefits of the act of composting and using compost itself. Fantastic. So for those folks who are saying, hey, I want to do this like this, like Trinice, just, you know, she had to step away for a moment, but she's saying, hey, I'm, I think I'm ready for this. So she orders a bin, but say she's not ready to garden. She doesn't need the compost back. What happens to it? So I, it goes to some folks who might need it, right? Yes. Um, so, you know, we have like, let's say about 25% of our members actually never need the compost back. Right. So we have about 75% that love it. Right. Compost mm -hmm. is black gold. If you're a gardener, you consider a compost black gold. Uh, so those folks really love getting their compost back. And again, we deliver it right to their front door. Um, for the 25% of folks that don't need the compost, let's say they don't garden or they live in an apartment. We have a wonderful garden partner program where we partner with local gardens as well as urban farms. And our members can actually select from our list of garden partners who they want to share their compost with. Nice. So we aggregate all of that. And when that garden is ready for delivery, they just give us a call and we drop it off. So the great thing about that program is that we don't want to be making compost just for the sake of it. We want it to get into our soil. So this is a beautiful way to also support our local food systems. Wow. Fantastic. So it, there's really not a downside. <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to figure out like, why wouldn't someone want to do this? Right. It lessens the amount on the environment. You're doing something good. You have 60% of your trash can go in there. So, you know, you're, you're making good use of it. It's, it's going to make you feel good. It's going to make your plants grow better or the stuff that you're going to buy uh, from your local garden or, or farm. So there's really no downside. <laughs> Not at all. And yeah. I mean, I'm sure you probably get this from your brother, but anybody who composts, they love it. Like it's an addicting lifestyle decision. And I always tell folks, regardless of what, whether you feel like it's going to fit into your life long term, I just recommend you trying it regardless of if you're using a service like us or a neighbor or doing it yourself, just try it. And I promise you, you will quickly become addicted and you won't stop talking about it. Probably like your brother does. Like I'm sure he can talk forever <laughs> about it. Yeah. It's so rewarding to see something that would be trash become gold. Absolutely. Yes. So what areas, um, as we uh, continue and sort of wrap up the conversation, which areas do you serve? So, um, our audience is probably primarily from the Atlanta metro area, but just want to make sure that we get that information out there for those who are interested and want to sign up. Where do they need to live? Yes. So our service area in Atlanta is based off of density. So um, if you go to our website at compostnow.org and enter your address, it will tell you right away if we service your area. But for the most part, we service all of the metro Atlanta area, Clarkston, those kind of surrounding cities as well, our towns as well. Um, so we service a little bit of everything around Atlanta and we're quickly growing and expanding our bounds to help more people compost. So if you're not in our service area, um, you can get on our wait list. So as soon as we launch in your neighborhood, we'll give you an email and let you know. Fantastic. So anything coming up that um, our folks should know about? Um, obviously, we want them to go to the website, probably connect with you on social media. Any events or things that people should uh, be connecting with you on? So most of our events just happened over Earth Week. Um, but we are hoping to be able to partner with some um, existing organizations and garden partners to throw some really fun events. Um, so stay tuned and follow us on social media and we'll be able to share some of those events um, as they get scheduled. Well, Kat, thank you so much for being on the show today and educating us all about compost now and compost. And for those of you who didn't catch it the first time, please make sure you go to 
um, their website so that you can learn more about it. You can uh, select your bin, start that service, and just start being feeling better about what you're doing and lessen your load on what's going in the trash because it is it is valuable. So we appreciate your time and uh, and just love compost now. So thanks for coming back on the show with us. Thank you so much for having me.